Ocean people, welcome back to Brent Durand Underwater. Today, I was starting to think about packing for the Philippines next week. I'm gonna go over there for a couple weeks and wanted to give you an insight into the gear I'm shooting for 2020. Now, all of this gear I've bought, this isn't a sponsored video or anything like that. It's just what I've managed to acquire over the past decade, slowly reinvesting money I've earned from photography back into gear, back into gear, maybe doing work trades for gear and anything I can do essentially to build up a very nice kit. Now, it's not the best kit or the top of the line or the latest, the newest and greatest because, you know, that stuff costs money. There's a lot of underwater photographers out there that just drop all the cash on travel and the newest gear every year. You know, that's not me. So keep that in mind. This is what works for me based on preferences I've had starting off with landscape photography, moving into underwater photography and doing a lot more experimentation with video and that sort of thing. So let's dive in. Let's check out the gear I'm using. If you have any questions as I'm talking through all this gear, leave a comment below. I'm happy to send you more product links, more information, or explain why I like one product versus another product and some of the pros and cons. Again, a lot of that is subjective and very much personal preference, but I'm happy to answer questions and let you know at least where my head is at, and that might help in your purchasing or your upgrade decision. So let's dive in. First is my main camera, and this is a Canon 5D Mark IV. And actually, this is a Canon 5D Mark III because that's a Canon 5D Mark IV. And I like that one better. Dual pixel autofocus, game changer for, uh, for video like this. Anyways, this is the three I use at topside. It fits inside of my housing. So if something catastrophic were to happen to my 5D Mark IV, I would switch to my 5D Mark III. But this generally stays in a small Peli box and comes with me on every dive boat, so I've got it for shooting topside opportunities. But the 5D Mark IV is my workhorse for underwater photography and underwater video. It's Canon, it's full frame. It can shoot 4K 30 frames per second or 1080 at 60 frames per second, which works for me and the stuff I'm doing. And it shoots beautiful color that Canon is known for with extremely fast autofocus and a nice collection of lenses from the 100 millimeter macro that's insanely sharp to some of the other wide angle lenses. Anyways, I love it. Let's move on. This is a GoPro Hero 6, and I'll oftentimes put this on top of my camera housing. So if I'm shooting still photos and I want to, to record video as well, I'll just pop this on top, especially for, for wide angle diving, but sometimes for macro dives too, I'll use a triple clamp to put this on top of my housing in conjunction with my focus light. So I can record video like this, or I can also have my focus light on, and I'm ready for anything, because you know that when you set up for macro, a whale shark's going to pass by, or something crazy like that. So GoPro Hero 6, I'd like like to have the seven or the eight instead of just borrowing them but hey let's be real I've got the six it works fine so until I find a way to get the eight this is what's going to happen and jumping into the wide angle realm this is my Canon 16 to 35 f4 it's the EF 16 to 35 f4 L I S U S M so it's a mouthful but I love this lens it's my rectilinear wide angle lens so I also have a fisheye lens. This is what I use most of the time shooting in California. Our visibility isn't as great as you would have on you know, your average day in the tropics or something like that. So I find this rectilinear lens produces just a nice linear image. It doesn't have the fisheye distortion you'll find with a fisheye. And it's much easier to control backscatter and gives you a lot more flexibility shooting if you don't know if you're walking into 30 foot viz or 10 foot viz. With this lens, you're shooting wide angle and 10 foot, 30 foot, 100 foot. It doesn't matter. In terms of image quality, the f4 won't be as good as f2.8, especially once you start digging into the pixel peeping and a lot of the forum discussions. But if you look at it in the field, you'll have a number of contest wins, a similar amount of contest wins, f4 versus 2.8, magazine covers, and things like that. So if it works for a lot of people out there producing amazing work, it's going to work for me too, and I'll save the money, I'll save the weight and compatibility with my filters. And talking about macro lenses, this is a Canon EF 100mm f2.8 L IS USM. But leave it to say, this is tack sharp. It's one of the best macro lenses, arguably one of the best lenses out there. It is fantastic for underwater macro, especially on a full frame camera like the 5D Mark IV, but also for Canon's crop sensor cameras, the 7D Mark II for instance, the 80D. Um, it just delivers great results. It's also good topside. So whether you're shooting portraits or product shots, this lens excels as a really sharp prime, produces beautiful contrast and color and bokeh. So enough said, 
This is the macro lens. Finally, the Tokina 10 to 17 millimeter fisheye lens. And this is a lens I owned for a number of years and then had sold and I didn't own one for a few years, focused mostly on rectilinear wide angle and then decided to pick up again to be able to use a small dome port for travel to the tropics with really great, great visibility in the Indo-Pacific. The Tokina 10 to 17 is renowned as one of the top wide angle lenses for underwater wide angle shooting. You will never hear that much bad about it. Get it, whether you're shooting full frame or a crop. One caveat on shooting full frame is you may be limited in terms of zoom range. So on the 5D Mark IV, you can shoot it from a little past 15 millimeters to 17, so it's not that much room to play. I actually tape mine down, you can see that green tape on there, at 17 millimeters, and I don't even use a zoom gear or a zoom ring with it. I just put this lens on as a fixed prime at 17 millimeters, and that's how I shoot it. It's easy, produces great images. So another must have, and probably the first wide angle lens on a DSLR you will want, versus going straight to rectilinear. Go with that 10 to 17 millimeter fisheye first. Housings and underwater gear. So why am I sitting outside, you might be asking yourself. Well, the housing's really important as underwater photographers, and I totally spaced on filming it when I was inside. I passed all the gear around it except the housing. Anyways, this is a CNC MDX 5D Mark IV housing. I love it. There's a number of great housings out there, and really, they come in at different price points, which have different pros and cons. What you really want to do is get out there and feel the different ergonomics and the controls, the buttons, the levers to see what works best for you, for your diving. Do you have larger hands or smaller hands? Do you wear dry gloves or do you have bare fingers? You know, what, what controls are gonna feel good for you at the different price points and budgets that you wanna spend? Remember that with the housing, you have to buy adapters and some ports and various things too, so the costs do add up pretty quickly. Um, that said, I love this housing, this works for me, and I mentioned it in the camera section, but I shoot my 5D Mark IV in here, and I can also put my 5D Mark III in case something happens there, so that's a huge plus for me, not having to have two of the same camera body, and all the rest of the stuff works well, so MDX 5D Mark IV. And now dome ports. Dome ports! So this is a CNC dome port 240. It's acrylic, but it's wide enough to fit that rectilinear 16 to 35 millimeter lens. And you want a wide nine or 10 inch dome like that for some of the wide angle lenses because it gives you the ability to zoom in and out. It lets you shoot great split shots because you've got a lot of surface area to work with and is an all around versatile dome. I actually got this um, through a friend who got it from a friend who had discarded it, thought it was too scratched. Long story short, still works for me. It's great. Um, it is acrylic. I tend to prefer glass domes because they've got better buoyancy characteristics in the water. So what you'll find with a large acrylic dome like this, depending on the lens and the housing and everything, is it might have a lot of front float because you can see all the air that is being trapped in the dome. It could pull up. If you have a smaller dome or a glass dome, it'll be a little heavier or trap a little less air, making it less buoyant and a little more evenly neutral in the water. So those are really good things to think about, especially if you're shooting video or maybe if you're free diving, you know, trying to push this underwater, you essentially have to jam, jam it down, put the fins way up and shoot down just to get this thing underwater. So there's a lot of pros and cons. Um, one nice thing about the acrylic is it's lightweight. And moving on, CNC's DX Macro Port 87. So this is straightforward, this is your option. It houses that Canon 100 millimeter macro 2.8L. And for when I'm shooting the fisheye, I recently picked up this optical dome port 2 100. This is a small glass four inch dome and it's fantastic. Really nice image quality and it allows you to really keep a slim, compact camera system. Putting this in front of the housing gives you a very low profile and could be good for swimming uh, with fast subjects that you'd be very close to, something like dolphins, for instance. This is a lot easier to move through the water than this. So I'm really enjoying this smaller dome. And on to lighting. So strobes, CNC's YSD2 strobe. And these became very popular with the YSD1. I had sets of those. Now onto the YSD2. Since the release of the YSD2, CNC has released the YSD2J. And then in just a couple months from now, about April 2020, we'll have the YSD3 available, which will be the way to go if you're looking for strobes. There are some other competitive strobes from Enon and other companies that are fantastic as well. Even with the YSD3 coming out, I plan to keep using my YSD2s, at least as long as they last. 
before upgrading, but the eventual upgrade would be the YSD3, unless these last long enough for a subsequent model to come out. Anyways, fantastic strobes, easy to use. In terms of video lights, I have two lights I'm using. These are the Light in Motion Sola Video Pro LE lights. They're 3800 lumens and very small, compact, easy to use, feature an internal battery that you can charge, and very simple, easy operation. So these are generally my go-to these days. I also have Kraken Hydra 5000s, and these aren't made anymore. I think there's two more recent versions than this, but basically 5000 lumens, fantastic workhorses, strobes with different buttons here to activate, turn on, and cycle through the modes, red light, white light, and even a blue UV light, which is pretty fun because you've got these built in. You just pop the filter on front of your camera and you can shoot UV on a night dive along with regular video and that sort of thing. So nice and versatile lights here. For macro focusing, I've got an iTorch V10 light. And this is really all you need for a macro focus light. Now, if you plan to shoot video as well and want a light that will be do both, you'll probably want something bigger than this. But if simply focusing is your goal, this iTorch V10 is about a thousand lumens. There's a number of newer options. This is probably at least five or six years old, but the newer options, about a thousand lumens is all you need under 200 US dollars. And you can get a fantastic focus light with white light and red light like this. It's small, it's easy to carry around. It's got replaceable batteries, which means if I'm out shooting all day, I can just replace batteries every dive or every two dives and then keep shooting all day and I'll just charge all those batteries when I'm home. But at least I can keep shooting during the day. And for macro, I've got my trusty diopter. This is a ReefNet Sub-C Plus 10 diopter, and I've had this for a while, since before Nauticam started making diopters and AOI and some of the other brands out there. And it's got fantastic image quality. It has for a long time, so it works for me. I don't see any reason to spend you know, a lot more money to replace it and get something different. Um, it's a fantastic diopter, so you'll see me shooting this all the time. The plus 10 magnification works well for me on full frame 5D Mark IV with the Canon 100 millimeter macro because I think a plus five or something less doesn't really produce the bang I want. If I see a small subject shooting full frame like that, I'm going to want this extra magnification of plus 10 just to get in close and get those detailed shots. So you'll see me shooting with this on the majority of nudibranchs, shrimp, crabs, or smaller things like that, just because it provides the right, um, the right field of view and the right magnification that allows me to fill the frame with subjects this big or this big and below. If subject starts getting this big, you can start to get away without shooting it and really filling the frame without the diopter, but any smaller than that, the diopter is the way to go. This is a Saga M67 flip adapter on here, which allows you to put this on the front of the macro port and just flip the diopter on and off. And I had one for a number of years, and then I didn't have one for a number of years. And during those years, I did not have one. It got pretty annoying, constantly screwing the diopter in and out of the port. Then you have to find somewhere on the sand or away from reef or coral or anything that you could damage to set it down. Then you go back and you shoot and then you say, oh, maybe I do want the diopter. You swim, put it back. Then you start screwing it all the way back in. There, now it's back in. So that got tiring after a while. And think about it when you're on a wall and there's nowhere to set this down. You gotta swim down, you go up, do you just put it in your BCD pocket? I tend to use a back plate without pockets, so now I have no pockets, so where do I put this? Anyways, flip adapter, $160, $180. It was a great investment to have this back again. I highly recommend a flip adapter if you want to use a macro diopter. And now for some fun stuff, snoots. A lot of people shooting macro are into snoots these days. There's a number of snoots on the market. This is mine. It comes from a local hardware store and actually pretty interesting. This pipe adapter, this much of it came from a local hardware store. This piece was found by my friend, a dive guide in the Philippines, who thought it would fit inside of this piece of PVC pipe I was using as a very wide, um, as a very wide snoot, and it did. I sawed off the tip to make just this narrow opening here, and the rest fit inside this PVC, glued it together, and now I've got this great homemade snoot that works for me. And fiber optic cables. Now there's a few brands that make fiber optic cables. They all tend to snap for me. I don't know what it is moving strobes around wide angle in a dry suit, dry gloves sometimes, but it they just snap and they're expensive. I finally decided to make my own. 
So here we go, I bought fiber optic cable off the internet, used some adapters that I had laying around, which was very convenient, and now I have my own cables. These are burly, they're tough, they're not gonna snap and, and fold as you're moving your arms. And these are actually a pretty new pair, so can't wait to use them and test them in the Philippines in a couple weeks. Lastly, for underwater video. Now, you'll see a link to a full video on how I made my underwater video tripod like this, but essentially it's homemade, it fits around my macro port here, and it's bayonet style with this rubber gasket from the hardware store, and that allows me to twist it like this or like this, which allows me to shoot in regular horizontal orientation or flip to portrait orientation for Instagram stories. And having a tripod to shoot in portrait for Instagram stories is pretty cool. You get some of those really crisp macro shots because of course, if you're not on a tripod, your macro shots will be all over. So being able to switch mid dive between those orientations was key. And I figured out this way for just a few dollars to make a tripod that does that. So check out that video. So this is it. This is my camera gear for 2020. It's what I'm gonna be shooting at least all year into the foreseeable years as far as I know and it does the job for me. Again, it's not the best. It might not be the personal preference of other photographers because everyone is going to have a personal opinion. The bottom line is to find the camera, the lenses, the housing brand, the strobes, the lights, everything that works for you, that works for the style of shooting you're going to do, and that works for your budget. So keep that in mind. Feel free to leave comments below and ask me any questions on this gear, and we'll take it from there.